Hey, you. Uh, if you're new here, welcome, first off. Uh, if you've been here before, then you might notice something different. And uh, that's uh, something you need to know about men in general. At some point, they just get sick of their hair. It's just not worth maintaining anymore. It's leaving on its own, and the weird places it starts to stick out just aren't worth maintaining. Uh, so I got rid of the vast majority of it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it, but uh, it is what it is now. I can't do anything about it, so here we are. All right, this episode, we're going to be getting into seeded randomness in JavaScript. JavaScript itself does not come with the ability to uh, give a seed to any random number generator, so we have to go out and look for our own. And I'll go over a couple I use and also what they're useful for. So stay tuned. All right, so what is a seeded random number generator? Or actually, what is a seed to begin with? A seed is uh, essentially it's a an input value that acts as a starting place for the random number generator. This is useful because now you can define where the random number generator is going to start and then all the random numbers it generates are going to be relative to that original seed. What this allows you to do is to have predictable randomness in your applications. So why would you want something predictably random in the first place? And that might sound kind of strange for most people who've used randomness to just have something unpredictable. So why would you want to have, why would you want to have something predictably unpredictable? Um, well, one obvious case is to just have predictability in your tests so that you can debug and troubleshoot properly. If you have genuine randomness throughout an application and a problem rises, how do you get to a point where you can debug that effectively? It's very, very difficult. Uh, so by having the ability to seed your random number generator and uh, stemming all your random decisions based around that seeded generator, then it allows you to use that seed in order to get to that same behavior that you need to test. But once you start to wrap your head around what predictable randomness actually means, then it allows you to tackle problems in just totally different ways. So let's say you have uh, 10 or 20 different random uh, decisions that you make throughout an application. And then you wanna normalize the state, or if you wanna reset, reset the state of that application, uh, then you might just iterate through all possible state and reset it to some base state. But since you're using predictable randomness, you can seed the resetter with your seed so that it only resets the state it needs to reset because it's going through the same decisions it's made all over again. Now that's a little strange. We'll get to how that might actually be used uh, in, in a production-like setting later, but first let's dive into, into some code to see what it actually looks like. So for my current application of seeded randomness, I'm using the seed random library in NPM. This is actually a collection of multiple uh, seeded random number generators. Uh, so you can choose which one is suitable for you. The default has worked perfectly fine for me. I don't foresee needing to deviate from that at all. All right, so, so here we have a very simple script that shows us outputting three different random number values um, via the seed random random number generator. We're not actually passing a seed here so that every time this is run, it's going to reseed itself and the random number generator is going to start from a new location. So you can see that here. Run index.js once. We have uh, two big negative numbers and a positive number here. Three negative numbers over and over again. Uh, we'll just get totally random numbers uh, over and over and over and over again. But now let's go back here and uh, seed it with some arbitrary string. Now, every single time we run this, we're going to get the same exact numbers over and over and over again. That's really the gist of what I'm talking about. It's nothing more complex than that. How might you actually use this in a production-like setting? So where I work at Shape Security, we have essentially what amounts to a, a server-side application and uh, client-side uh, logic. So uh, server, JavaScript stuff on the client. Uh, the way that we use this concept uh, is by first off making sure that everything is deterministic and everything is based around a particular seed. And then we can transmit that seed back and forth in order to make sure that the correct decisions were made on the client um, that were relative to that seed. 
So we pre-generate a lot of decisions on the server side uh, and then deliver the results of those decisions on the client side with that seed so that the results of those decisions that were made on the server and the results of those decisions that are made on the client pass back up with the seed can be all validated at the end in order to make sure that nothing was tampered with. It's, it's, it was a pretty clever approach uh, at dealing with this and has ended up being extremely effective for our security-based application. Now, you might not work at a security company, you might not have to do something like that. So I'm using seeded randomness uh, in a side project I'm working on at home in a video game I'm making. You might have seen uh, the term seed in games like Minecraft. Minecraft is a procedurally generated world. You can uh, input a seed, which will give you the same world every time. This is the same sort of concept I'm talking about. This seed uh, is the basis for a lot of random uh, decisions that are made in how the world is generated. What biomes go where, how tall something is going to be, whether or not there's going to be a cave here, is there going to be a village over here? These decisions are all random, but they all stem from that same seed, which one, gives you predictability if you need to test or debug, but also two, in the case of Minecraft, gives you the ability to share these seeds with a lot of other people so that you can share cool worlds. And that's, that's pretty neat on its own. I'm using that similarly in the game I'm making. So let's go there, it's a CD open dungeon. Check things out, and we're going to uh, npm run dev, I think it is. Let's hope this actually works because uh, I have not actually worked on it for about a week so far. This is pure side project stuff. So with three kids, dog, wife, work, conferences, travel, uh, I don't get all that much time to work on it. It's just a fun thing for me to do, to experiment with different technology. So this is it, it's, it's very basic. Uh, oops. <laughs> So, well, this is actually a good example. Um, so right now I've got a procedurally generated dungeon and I'm using a seed to dictate all of the behavior of the map generation, the behavior of the mobs, uh, the value of the chests, uh, basically everything. Um, and this is actually a great example because right now I've got two doors right next to each other. Uh, they should not be generated right next to each other, but now I can use this seed in order to make sure that I get back this reuse reproducible test case. Uh, because every time I refresh now, it's going to give me this same room. All right, so now if I change this seed, I get a different character, different doors, different rooms. Change that seed again. And different character, different room, different map. So this is useful for me uh, in order to create a game that will kind of generate itself. I mean, that, that's a fun process in itself. Uh, but what is also cool here is that since every single aspect of the game is deterministic and based around this seed, all I need to do if I want to, to turn this into a game that, that other people actually play and maybe there are high scores, is take all the input that was generated by the player, me, and the seed, and then I can replay the entire game on the server side in order to validate that the score being submitted is valid. Now. That's, that's pretty cool. Now, all these sorts of decisions are only possible because of that uh, seed uh, being used to generate all decisions in the game. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, this is the latest in a series of videos I'm doing on NPM highlights, where I'm targeting uh, parts of the NPM ecosystem that uh, a lot of people just probably aren't touching. They're outside of the, the Babel, Webpack, RxJS, Express World, uh, and there's a lot of cool stuff out there. So if you have any cool modules or packages that you know of that are worth highlighting, please let me know. Uh, I love diving into new things that I've never played with before, uh, especially as it gets onto the outer edge, the outskirts of what people normally do, uh, because that is where a lot of the cool stuff lies. Uh, so thanks for sticking around. Talk to you later, bye. Hey, well, thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, right. Hi. All right, I got work to do.